Hey folks, I'm Demotro, and today I want to tell you about a way of writing numbers that some computers use instead of binary. You may have heard that computers write down their information in zeros and ones using base two. Oh man, I However, there are some computers that use a different base called balanced ternary involving the digits 0, 1, and a third digit that isn't 2. Now we can actually jump into why and how this balanced ternary might work as an alternative to binary by imagining some puzzles where we're trying to weigh some items. Let's say I have an old-fashioned balance scale that'll just tell me whether the two sides are equal in weight or whether one side weighs more than the other. And I want to be able to test the weight of any item that weighs a whole number amount of some unit of weight up to some given size. Let's say it weighs less than 100 of that unit. What would be the ideal collection of weights for me to have that would let me test any of those weights? Well, my collection of weights would need to have some subset of it that let me calculate each and any possible whole number weight between zero and 99 in this case. But let's say I also wanted my set of weights to have the minimal amount of total weights in it so that I didn't just have like 99 one unit weights and used somewhere from zero to 99 of those. Well, if you first encounter that problem, you probably assume that my target weight is on this side and the weights in my collection are either being unused or put on the opposite side of the balance scale. And if that is the setup and that's what we're allowed to do, then my ideal set of weights would have one that was one unit one that weighed, let's say this one is two units, something that weighed four units, something that weighed eight units, and all of the powers of two, including two to the zeroth power, which is one, up through the biggest one before our target weight. In this case, we would also include a 16 unit weight, a 32 and a 64. And that fact that we can take some subset of the powers of two and add them up to any non-negative integer is actually the same fact that the base of binary or base two can represent any of those numbers that the weights were using just the digits zero and one. Any of the target weights could be made from using one of some of them and zero of some of the others. For example, if I wanted to write 10 of a thing in binary, I would use one eight, no fours, one two, no ones, and that eight and two add up to my 10. Just like if I need to weigh something that weighs 10 units, I can use one of my eight unit weights and one of my two unit weights. But here's the thing. The powers of two aren't actually the answer to the original question. They're not the ideal set of weights that would let me calculate any target weight because I don't have to put weights from my collection just on the opposite side of the target. I could put weights from my collection on that same side too. Like if, for example, this brick weighed six units, then uh, pretend the balance scale still works in our analogy, <laughs> then having a two unit weight here and an eight unit weight there would confirm its weight in the same way that eight minus two is six. 
So knowing that we can stack our weights on either balance scale and the ones here help add toward a target weight while the ones here subtract in a way, what would the ideal or minimal set of weights for our collection be? My ideal collection would include a one unit weight, a three unit weight, a nine unit weight, a 27 unit weight, and all of the powers of three, including the zeroth power one, up to whatever power of three was before our target amount. In the case of it weighing a whole number up to 99, we would also need one weighing 81, the next power of three. And there's some way of assembling these in different combinations to add and subtract toward any of those target numbers. For example, if I needed to calculate something that was 10 worth of weight, I could use my nine unit one and my one unit one there. Whereas if I needed to calculate something that was a weight of 20, it would be a little trickier, but I could still do it. I would need to take 27 there, plus three more there, and then put nine and one on the side of the target. So if the situation where we have the powers of two just on this side is like binary, is there a base that this new situation is like? There is, and that base is called balanced ternary. With the powers of three as our collection of weights, that's like having spots in a number that are worth powers of three, except in normal base three or ternary, we'd be using zero, one, or two of each of these. And in this case, so, whoa, whoa, whoa. in this case, we had none, one, or removing one as an option, which is like zero, one, and negative one as our possibilities. Now, unlike my older episode about counting in negative bases, where the number that each place represented were powers of a negative number, here the negative comes in as one of the options for what a digit can be. In balanced ternary, the three digits you use represent zero, one, and negative one. Now there's not really a standardized third symbol that everyone uses when talking about balanced ternary. Some texts write zero, one, and T for the negative one. Some write zero plus to represent one and minus to represent negative one, which sort of hints at how they have the same magnitude, just different signs or directions they're taking it. And what we'll do, sort of a mix of those two, is just making this one have a crook on top of it so we can write an upside down one to represent negative one. I also chose to have arrow-like symbols for these because it hints at how computers could actually encode these three states. In a more typical binary computer, this structure of zeros and ones is made from the computer having little parts that are either in an off state, signifying a zero, or an on state, signifying a one. And here, we still have an off state and now sort of have two types or directions the on state could be in. Like if our computer could have a part putting out an electrical charge either clockwise through something, counterclockwise through something, or not at all. Or if it was receiving light either horizontally, vertically, or not at all. Now, knowing that a computer could encode those three states, how do you turn them into specific numbers like binary can? Remember how I said to make 20 using those weights, we would have used 127, 
one three and then we would have removed one of the nines and one of the ones. Well, this would be a way balanced ternary could express the number 20. And for those who remember how I've shown in earlier episodes how the last digit of a number in a given base is similar to the patterns of modular arithmetic, where we imagine a clock ranging from zero to one less than the base number. And typically in base three, we would have zero, one, and two, which is the typical way we've analyzed mod three, but we can call the values congruent to two in mod three, the values congruent to negative one in that mod as well, because this is sort of one hour before the start. And so in mod three, both of these languages exist, and it sort of captures the patterns of both the normal ternary and the balanced ternary. Now, balanced ternary isn't the only possible balanced base. Beyond balanced ternary, which used zero, one, and a symbol for negative one, we also could make balanced base five using two and negative two, or balanced base seven or any odd number. These balanced bases have a nice symmetry that typical bases don't, and that actually gives them some mathematical superpowers, which I wanna show you using the simplest of them, balanced ternary. Here's a stretch of number line with how we know numbers written on the bottom and how balanced ternary could write them on top. Like the number five can be written with one of the three squareds place, which is nines, negative one of the threes place, and negative one of the ones place. One cool trait about these balanced bases is how they handle negative numbers. Not only can we represent the negative numbers without needing a minus sign in the representation, and we can recognize them compared to the positive numbers by what the largest digit is using, whether the largest digit spot in the number is a one or a negative one. But also it's very easy to flip a number into its negative version or vice versa. All you have to do is take all of the non-zero aspects of that number and switch their sign, the ones to negative ones and the negative ones to ones. For example, with six here, that's like up, down, neutral, and the flipped version of six is down, up, neutral. Another cool trait of balanced ternary and other balanced bases is that if you zoom into a number that isn't a whole number, such as pi, which normally we'd write the decimal form as 3.141, Assuming I'm gonna write more digits, otherwise that spot would round to a two. But if I continue the digits, it's one, five, assuming I'm gonna write more digits, because otherwise that five would round to a six, the next one is a nine. And in general, in our base 10 system and similar bases, if we ever lose the end of part of a number or truncate it at a certain point, it's not always the same as the rounded form of that number. Meaning that if you were trying to write the first four digits of pi after the decimal, you have to pick between either writing the proper digit that's at that spot or writing the properly rounded form. But in a balanced base, any truncation is the same as rounding. Any time you only express a smaller portion of a number like that, it's the same as if you rounded to that spot. Even outside of computers, there are other ways in which balanced ternary could be useful in a society. Like if there was a currency system where coins were worth powers of three, one, three, nine, etc. 
Two people who each had one of each of those coins with them could negotiate a transaction of any amount between them that added slash subtracted, sort of like the balance scale thing from earlier, into one of the people having given the other any amount. There are also some special abilities that both balanced ternary and unbalanced ternary have that make them more efficient at storing information by certain metrics compared to either binary or larger numbered bases. And we'll return to that in an episode about what I call purely threeven numbers, because those, which most people call the powers of three, are what the places in these numbers numbers stand for. Now, I know less about computers, but on a mathematical level, and even on an instinctive level, we can feel a certain sort of symmetry in this balanced base that's lacking in the regular ternary. The great mathematician Donald Newth, who wrote about many wild bases and how those bases applied to computer systems, wrote that he thought balanced ternary was the prettiest number system of all, and that he thought this symmetry in it could be important and useful in the future. However, although balanced ternary has been used in some computers, most computers nowadays do use binary, but perhaps that's partially because the binary computer parts are manufactured on a larger scale and able for companies to get for cheaper. Maybe in the future, as more balanced ternary parts are made, maybe in the future, more computers will take advantage of the nice symmetries of balanced ternary. And that's all the balanced ternary for now. If you enjoyed learning about these alternate bases, make sure you've seen my other episodes about how to count in a variety of crazy bases, which I've linked in the description. And I hope you have a great day. I'll see you in the next one.